there's great things that can happen that can kind of take you, whoa, this is so cool. And then there's days where it's like, why is nothing working? And why will no one call me back? What does ever, you know, so it's like there's highs and lows, but through the highs and lows, if you can just lay a brick every day and, you know, just get a little bit better, make that one phone call, make that one connection over time, um, you, you're just astounded at how that starts to build. And, and pretty soon you start to build a wall and then another wall. And so if I had any advice, it would be just like brick by brick, day by day. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots from my neck. Self-respect when you out of line, you put yourself in check. Oh. Welcome to the Keller and Kess Show. I'm Megan Keller and I'm Amanda Kessel. All right, welcome back to the Keller and Kess Show, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the latest interview with our young stud, Hannah Bilka. Um, she's always got a smile on her face if you watched on Torch Pro's YouTube channel. And now we also have some great guests coming up on the pod, Matt Fornitaro and Rob Bellamy. They're kind of the brains behind this operation. Matt is a co-founder of Torch Pro, and Rob is a producer, editor, I think I accidentally called him the cameraman last episode. <laughs> and after, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just did Rob dirty like that. So sorry, Rob, if you're listening. But, yeah, they're, like I said, they're the brains behind all of this. They they give us some good content and ideas, and they work hard to gain some traction for female athletes like Kess and myself, and they do a lot for us, and we're lucky to have them in our corner. Yeah, they've definitely been the vision behind this product – or. Yeah, behind this product. And Products, yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be here without them, that's for sure. So looking forward for you guys to hear from them. They're both, like, so intelligent. Rob's one of the funniest guys ever, and, and Matt's just, like... Great storytellers. Yeah, great storytellers. That's like, a, that's like an art, really. Yeah. They're... We'll, we'll have to get them on again and just solely do stories, because yeah. I think they kind of pick their brains about Torch Pro and kind of why it was started and their goals and stuff, but I think we kind of need a round table of stories. I agree. I could listen to them all day long. Yeah, we'll send it out there. We need round two with them. Um, another thing to mention here before we get started, sending our thoughts and prayers out to Jenny here at Koski, probably butchered that name, but she's been a long-standing defenseman for the Finnish team. I think one of the best in the world. Yeah, by far. Like, it's just even when Finland was kind of trying to build their team, she just always was one of the best in the world um her patience with the puck and her skating everything yeah like you don't want to be chasing her down like it's just annoying to play against is she she's a four-time olympian but maybe even five like outstanding but was cut um with a skate a scary scary accident yeah which has kind of been happening a little bit here in hockey um, i know they're starting to like make socks that are supposed to be cut resistant I don't know exactly where she was cut. We were trying to <clears throat> read, but most of it was in Finnish. Mm -hmm. But definitely sending our thoughts and prayers out to her. Yeah, and hoping she makes a speedy recovery. Yeah. Truly one of the one of the best players in the game. So. Yeah, for sure. Glad to hear she's doing okay and recovering, and hopefully she makes it back to the ice soon. Yeah. Um, anyways, now uh, Kess and I just finished up our pro season, and... Neither of us won the championship, nope. <clears throat> so we're we're not we're not home with that extra dough that the winners got. But we had a twenty five percent chance, fifty percent chance between us. So, no. Yep, and our odds were better, and, and we just didn't convert. Mm -hmm. So we should stay away from Vegas. Yeah, yeah it was a successful season though. Um, got some really good crowds. Like just continued to build the fan base, mm -hmm. and played in some cool markets yeah. that. Like, going to L.A. and Anaheim was really cool, and D.C., Tampa. I just named all the U.S. Yeah. ones, but... <laughs> the Canadian cities, I... The Canadian, they, they pulled good crowds. It was just cold when we went there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. So. And then for the first time this season, you know, we were kind of mixed between the Canadians and American players, which at first it's, like, iffy. You don't really know them, but it turned out turned out really well yeah, you start to make friendships or you become teammates and actually like you come to respect their game a lot at least I did 
when I became teammates with some players, I was like, wow, like, okay. Yeah, you just see more. It, of them. it was like fun to play with them. You have a whole new respect. Yeah, I, think. I agree, definitely. But that, that ends here. Yeah, I hate to admit it, but definitely, for <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll yeah. get some of them on here uh, eventually, for sure. We got, yeah. yeah. But that was also the funny part was going to and from rivalry series to and from like uh, PWHPA. So we would be opponents and then become teammates yeah. and then be opponents. Yeah, like where else would anybody do that? Like, wild. Yeah, it's like a quick turnaround. Like we would like travel together for some of the yeah. things. And you had just played like a heated rivalry series game and now you're on the same plane and you're going to be teammates. Yeah. So it's kind of a funny. Yeah, that just doesn't happen anywhere else. Where women's hockey is at. No. Like, end of the seasons, the, the NHL guys like, yeah. will have their worlds and stuff like that. But That's true. Or I guess you could say, like, college players coming together. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah, it is just different. Oh, speaking of college, have to. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Slash, fortunately, some of our teammates, shout out to the Wisconsin Badgers for women, winning the Women's uh, National Championship the seventh yeah. time. They beat Ohio. Is that, record, is that all time now? Um, I think it's all time, maybe. More than Minnie? It, it might be. Yeah. yeah. Definitely more than, than Minnie me. Minnie might have six. Um, How many do you have? Three. Hmm. You didn't get four? No, my freshman year we lost to Wisconsin. Oh. Not that, like, we just weren't as good that year. Like, Wisconsin was loaded. They had. Yeah, the X, but sometimes X, you can steal games. Yeah, like, it, at the end. Good team, but yeah, and many losing to Wisco in the semis, so. Three's not bad. Tough, tough loss there, but um, awesome to see. You know, shout out Jesse Comfort, one of our teammates transferred there for her yep. fifth year from BU um, and was able to win a national championship. So pretty pretty cool for her to, to be able to bring that home. Yeah. I think I think Britta has three. Also, I was happy Nat, Nat got yeah. it. She was injured, had a tough injury, middle, end of the year. And Britta has three? I think she wow. has three. That's crazy. We may have another year. I don't know. All these COVID Lace, years are... Yeah, Lacey has two up. now. Yeah. Lacey has two. She's two for two. Yeah. Two for two. Yeah. We've got a few teammates on that team, mm-hmm. so we, we can be happy and celebrate that. Yeah. And now Except we have tryouts with them, coming. so... True. Um, you probably didn't watch, but if you were watching the national championship game, the amount of times that they showed Abby Rock on, <laughs> on the screen, you would have thought she had a kid on the team. It was... <laughs> And she always had her phone out. Like, they had to have shown her so many times. I was seeing snaps. Like, how did, how and why did she have a dog in the arena? I think it was, I, I don't know it's how just, they got it in there. That's just Abby. But that shirt was horrendous. Coming up. Yeah. I call her out. Yeah, it was like a Hawaiian Buckeye shirt. Yeah. Like. No clue. She's, but, she'll be on here. I'll give it to her. She had a super fan mode on, so. Yeah. She'll be on here at some point. We'll get her on. She's crazy personality, yeah, that's be, for sure. Maybe in the book, she's coming up. Yeah. Um. So other than that, yeah, we have tryouts leaving this weekend. A five-day tryout before World Championships. Meg and I are on separate teams again. It's bummed to see that. Yeah, I I don't need to be getting dangled at tryouts. I don't dangle Amanda. You don't dangle me. You you let one up for me, and I'll let you up. I'll let you go back door, and you let me in on a breakaway. I know. I see you get on the ice. I'm just going to change. <laughs> I'm just going to get off the ice. short shifts, go hard for my 30 seconds, and get off. Yep. Yeah. So. so, but you know what's funny about camp now that now I realize I'm getting older is I, I have a rental van. You do? I was given yeah, ah. was given duties of the rental car. No. I had to pick that up at the airport when oh. I left. Yep. That's hilarious. Yeah, so I, I got the whip if you want a coffee. All right. Well, you're on the other team. But you're on the but, other team, yeah. so you're going to need to schmooze me, maybe Venmo me a little extra. I know. Damn. No, I'm just kidding. 
All right. I don't really have anything else, do you? No, I think that's... Your supper's ready? Yep, I got dinner here at 9 p.m. What's dinner tonight? I don't know, some chicken and chicken and veggies. Oh, healthy. Yep. Healthy and Balkan here. Yeah, yeah. put on some muscle. Yeah. Well, All right, well, enjoy this episode with Matt and Rob, the brains behind this operation, and like and subscribe wherever you're listening. You can follow us on Instagram, Keller and Kess Show, and subscribe to Torch Pro's YouTube channel. Enjoy. Yeah, so we thought we'd get some of the men behind the camera that have helped bring this show to life. You know, Torch Pro is the media company producing this, and we wouldn't really be here without you guys. So we brought, you know, Matt on today. Very excited about <clears throat> the launch of the Keller and Cash show. I think it's, we've been talking about it for, you know, a few months now. We've obviously worked for a while with Megan and, and Amanda. We've known each other for a while. And so to sort of see the culmination of this weekend and finally, you know, sitting down, you guys having a bunch of interviews, uh, really excited about what we're building and, and you guys um, building with you guys, I should say. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. You guys obviously have incredible networks, have had incredible careers, and the ability for you guys to go out and have some meaningful conversations with teammates and athletes and other sports, um, I think is going to help a lot of people give access um, where maybe it isn't right now. So super excited. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And I remember sitting down with you and Rob and Cafe Nero and you're like, so we have this idea. What do you think about a podcast? And I was like, by myself, no way. Like, I will not be able to do it. Maybe if I get a teammate involved and your guys were like immediately like, yes, let's do it. And I thought of Cass and called her up and I was like, what do you think about this? She's like, oh my gosh, yes. Been wanting to do something forever. Like she's a mastermind. And so we can't thank you guys enough for helping us start our own show and podcast and grow our brand. And you guys have been a huge part of that. So when did you really start Torch Pro? Like how did this idea come to life? Torch Pro was the, the idea was sort of started years ago with Joe Pavelski and I, um, really around at the time he was the captain of the Sharks, had no social media presence whatsoever, um, and had a really, really interesting story. I mean, he was this, you know, slow kid from Wisconsin, but he could always shoot, but he was doubted at every level. And you know, he at the time he was like a 13-year NHL veteran, a captain in the NHL, had sort of turned himself into this superstar. And it was really around like Joe, like we got to tell your story. And you know, it was this was 2017-ish, and like building a brand as an athlete was still somewhat foreign, especially in hockey. Uh, but it was like this is important, and I think where you're at in your career, you can help a bunch of younger players and that next generation and that was really the the root of it the foundation of it Joe is obviously a great leader um, has had this great career and so in telling his story uh, it really felt like it was his way to kind of give back to the game and um, you know we started just around let's tell your story and I'll help you manage your social and that that was really the the kickstart um, and the success we had and the things we learned through telling his story and building his social and, you know, it started to attract other athletes, other players. And uh, one of the, the, the next athletes we worked with was Casey Bellamy. And Casey's obviously, we all know her very well. She's a legend. Um, and her willingness to like go deep and dive in with us and be vulnerable and build with us and tell story it like it helped her I think in terms of her branding and, and things like that but it helped us get me especially like tremendous insight into everything you guys go through are battling have battled and like I have a daughter she's nine she doesn't play hockey but she's a little athlete and like the importance of her having people like you guys to look up to and to aspire and just to learn lessons from, you know, it shouldn't always be a guy, right? And so for me, four years ago, it was like, this is important to us and it's going to be important as we build this business. And I think 
the culmination of where we are today and like sitting here and seeing this and like this is a real show and we're really doing this and you guys are crushing it already like this this means a ton to us because like it's been this wasn't an overnight thing this is you know it's been a couple years in the making and we started to get to know each other and here we are so really really excited about what we can turn this thing into and and just help you guys like share who you are you both have these great personalities and know so many people and we just want to help you share your stories and and your path with as many people as we can and that's kind of like why we're here too because like you said like you realize like stories aren't told that often like it's you know here and there or it's a star player or it's like you know one-offs but it's like there's so many unique paths and stories to share that don't get out there Exactly. And I think that's the the beauty of a show like this, a podcast like this. Like, um, you know, it's not just like right down the barrel, like answer or, you, you know, like your people get a little bit scared. It's like it's a podcast. It's meant to sort of just share stories. And through that storytelling, all these little nuggets that people can sort of latch onto and can help them and in whatever pursuit they're in. So, uh, like I said, it's it's phenomenal that we've gotten here you guys have crushed it so far and and it's just the beginning hopefully just the beginning that's what we hope for yeah you alluded to it it's like you get to share all these stories of these athletes and a lot of times growing up all we saw was the ending we saw either the championship or the defeat you don't get to see all these little things leading up to it starting in athletes youth career or the adversity it faced like everything they go through go through during their time so like it's really cool to see all the work that you guys do showcasing all of that and allowing us athletes to have a voice and tell our own stories I think that's like one of the coolest things about Torch Pro is like you put a lot of faith in us as athletes to share our own stories and kind of write our own narrative yeah and I think like that's one of our sort of key tenants at Torch Pro is like to allow the athlete to like be yourself and like share your unique authentic self we never want to tell you you know we're going to help guide you and and support you and give you resources um but I think like oftentimes especially in this quick fast digital world we live in like there's people popping off and there's viral videos and you know all over the place but a lot of times for professional athletes who have the best stories who have the most experience they can kind of be like, I'm a little scared. I don't know what to share. I don't know how to kind of wrap this up and like, you know, do it authentically. And and I think the fact that we're here today is a perfect example of that. It took time for us to meet and come up with what we were going to do here. But I think like with Torch, we've really just tried to give athletes a chance to to build something authentic um, that they care about, that's meaningful to them. Uh, you know, whether that's within the sport or, or outside the sport or shed light on things that they care about away from the game. Um, and so it's been a lot of fun. I mean, we, we started heavy in hockey and we've, you know, we've gotten to be able to work in a bunch of different sports, bunch of different athletes from UFC fighters and, and you know, to some NBA guys. And um, obviously all the work we've done with you guys, you guys just sat down with Charlotte North, the GOAT uh, in women's lacrosse, like, it's just really, really um, cool for us to, to just be that sort of engine that can help these stories get out there. And, and that's what we're focused on. Yeah, and you guys are obviously off to a great start. But, like, where do you see, you know, your company going in the next year, five years, ten we're years, just, whatever We're going to ride the like... Keller and Cass rocket ship <laughs> wherever it takes us. That's right. Um, no, I think if you look at Torch Pro today, we, we obviously power four podcasts. We have newsletters. We do different video features with, with athletes. Um, you know, I think we, we have a ton of um, relationships with a bunch of different athletes. We're, we're, working, we're constantly working on new ways to bring more stories to people, whether that's fans, whether that's the next generation. And so I think as you look out where can Torch Pro go, it's we wanna be synonymous in sports and in culture and in inspiring people and, and helping people um, reach their goals. And I think if we sort of stay in that lane and, and we align ourselves with great athletes and great people, just like you guys, um, sky's the limit. Yeah. 
Well, we can't wait to continue to work with you guys and be a part of your journey just as much as you are of ours. Um, do you want to end with the starting five? Did we come up with one for Matt? Good I think point. it's the artist as well. Like, All right, we let's got go. Let's do it. Yeah. See the music taste? Yeah, before, before we jump into that, I want to thank you guys too. I really do because like you guys are legends and you're very humble and um, but like where you guys sit in your sport for you guys to believe in us as well is like really important, really meaningful. So we don't take that lightly. So before we jump into the fun stuff, I want to thank you guys too for, for betting on us and, and believing in us to, to bring this to life. And we're just getting started. So let's, let's, let's have some fun here. All right, so we like to do the, the starting five, and it's something we do with each of our guests. We pick a different category um, depending on the guests, and we're going to do artists with you. So your artists. top five. All right. If you have any right. ready. If not, Kes can, she'll probably say like Lizzo or. <laughs> Don't say That's Lizzo. That was, gonna be my, <laughs> that was going to be mine. No. I'll let Kes go first. You want me to go first? Mm -hmm. Am I going to share the five with Rob again too? No, I don't think so. <laughs> do we wait? Do we like snake like one, 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 or you go five, five, five? I got five ready. But okay. I so got. So this is top five artists. Yep. Yep. Okay. We'll let you think while we go. Okay. My number one share. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. That's, that's funny. It's off the board. I, I love I just, it. Like, I don't I even. Didn't... I don't even understand what's funny here. <laughs> like. I just didn't Should, expect by it. By far, number one on my no, list. I Do not I disrespect Cher. Never again, sorry. Ed Sheeran, Morgan Wallen, Lizzo, and Jay Biebs. That's impressive. Pretty, pretty a, mainstream. Yeah, that's, that's a great list. I have one overlap with you. Mine's a little more like subtle folk. I'm going Zach Bryan, The Lumineers, Mumford and Sons. They split up a little bit now, but it's all right. Justin Bieber. And Taylor Swift, Swifty. Those are all pretty That's good. Like out of left field, the Swift. I yeah, think. You, I mean her new like, album <laughs> just came out. I'm I like um, the old Swift. I grew up like Western Canada, like you know, country folk kind of. But I'm like hardcore rap, hip hop guy kind of. <laughs> um, number one, Eminem. No That's question. That's a good choice. No Detroit. question. I can tell by your style. Eminem. <laughs> Eminem, Jay Z, absolute goat. <laughs> um, oh man, I like everything. Uh, Kenny Chesney, uh, he's, good he's, one. You B. just kind of can't go wrong there. All time fave. Yeah. This is gonna. No, I can't do that. I. You know what? I'm gonna because I li If you're asking me the top five and who I listen to the most, I'm gonna put Rob Bellamy in there. He's yes. always on. Right. He's always on at our house when yep. we're in the car, and um, it's only a matter of time before he, pay he you? pops. Yeah, he paid <laughs> me two hundred bucks to say that. <laughs> and fifth, mm, I'm gonna go with the Canadian goat Shania Twain. Oh, that's a good one. Love her. Love her. That's my five. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Different, different stuff. And we forgot to ask him, like. It's come up a little bit, but the thing that we end up end with every episode is the it factor. You know, what kind of has made you you and made you so successful? Um, if I had to answer that, the it factor in terms of like trying to build a business, being an entrepreneur, like I was an athlete, just like you guys, like until I was 32 years old, I knew nothing else. Um, you know, obviously went to college, but like I was athlete, 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 athlete. And when all of that goes away and the locker room's gone and you sort of have to go down this path, this mirror test, I, I like to call it, but like, who am I? What am I? What am I going to do? And so going on this sort of entrepreneurial journey, I think the, the it factor um, for any success we've had so far is just like, brick by brick, like step by step. Like it sounds so simple, but it is so true. There's great things that can happen that can kind of take you, whoa, this is so cool. And then there's days where it's like, why is nothing working? And why will no one call me back? What does ever, you know? So it's like there's highs and lows, but through the highs and lows, if you can just lay a brick every day, and you know, just get a little bit better, make that one phone call, make that one connection. Over time, 
um, you, you're just astounded at how that starts to build. And, and pretty soon you start to build a wall and then another wall. And so if I had any advice, it would be just like brick by brick, day by day. Um, try not to get too high, too low, um, and, and build it that way. And, and success will be at the end. Love it. I like it. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Thanks for having me, ladies. <laughs> yep. Thanks Thank for you. joining the pod. Yes. What's up, Rob? What's we up? Just, we just had Matt on. Uh, we got the background on Torch Pro, the vision behind it, how it started, all the inspiration, and we've done a lot of work with you recently, uh, the Keller and Kess show. I know you've been itching to get on the other side of this camera, but <laughs> so we want to know when did when did you start at Torch Pro and, and what do you do here? Yeah, so I started with Torch Pro uh, almost two years ago, um, and it just started with my sister Casey back then. Um, a little over two years ago, it was called Company 39, and completely, kind of a completely different model, but they came to our house in Westfield and interviewed Kay, and I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, I never <laughs> met, I, what, like, you got a camera crew in here. I never met Matt before. I played against him in college, but never, like, formally met him and got to know him a little bit. Um, also, Joey Diamond, who was there at the time, uh, was a buddy of mine, played hockey with him in South Carolina. So I was just kind of intrigued by the whole situation. And, you know, I, it was like, I'm a creative person. And I was kind of like in there like, hey, ask this question. You know what I mean? And I was like, just kind of a passion that maybe I didn't know I had. And uh, kept in contact with Matt and we stayed in touch. And I was kind of going up to the offices in Manchester for um, you know, about a year, just kind of on and off, um, staying in, you know, lingo with, with what they were doing and seeing if I could help anywhere. And one thing led to another and ended up, they ended up hiring me and kind of just picked up a camera and learned. Um, my cousin TL, uh, who has been doing this for 30, 30 years now, um, she came on board as well. Um, and she helped me a lot. It's a, it's a tutor that I got that a lot of people are lucky to have and I I'm lucky to have her as a as a family member so I learned a lot in this craft that maybe takes years and I learned it in a, in a quick period of time so doing that still I mean in, in a in a company like Torch Pro that's a startup um you know you got to wear a lot of hats with six seven people um you know in a company so you got to kind of learn different things and what the company needs and you know obviously filming and editing and storytelling is one of them so you know I learned it and here we are that's crazy you just picked up a camera like not too long ago like us being athletes you being a former athlete like you start your sport like from such a young young age and develop over time and over time like was it hard to like pick up something new like it's the same as athletics but just a different passion yeah I think I mean, athletics is different because I feel like you got to be doing it your whole life to be good at it, especially, I think, like especially hockey because you have to know how to skate. Um, but I think creatively and, and learning the camera, it's like, okay, it's, you got to learn a couple buttons and, you know, learn, <laughs> learn brightness and yeah. stuff like that. And um, obviously learn, like I, I edit in Adobe Premiere and you have to learn the program and, and. Um, that took a little bit of time, but that's what YouTube is for. So I think <laughs> once you do it a few times and you get reps, um, it becomes easier and easier. So practice makes perfect. Exactly. Yeah. You're a man of many trades. Like you have such an interesting story. Like what were you doing before Torch? Yeah. So I, I grew up playing hockey, uh, grew up in a hockey family. Obviously you guys play with my sister, Casey. Um, and I played hockey all up through college, uh, played at University of Maine, got drafted by the Flyers, uh, played in the minor leagues for seven or eight years, something around there. And then my senior year in college, I picked up a guitar and just always loved music, always loved seeing live shows. And if I was at a bar, I was always, gra I'd always gravitate to the live music that was in the corner. Um, I never knew where it would take me, but I just was like, man, I'd love to learn. So I started and my parents got me a guitar for, I think it was my 23rd birthday. And I became obsessed with it. Like I didn't think that I would love it as much as I did. And I just pretty much locked myself in my room and just learned and learned and learned and learned new songs, learned, found my voice a little bit. It took a long time. I was trying to sound like other people and I didn't know you could lower a key or higher key. I was blowing my voice out <laughs> all the time. And um, just kept getting better and better and, and finally had the courage to play out and 
I've been doing it now for probably 10, nine, 10 years. And, you know, it's been, it's still a passion now as it was day one. And, um, you know, I've been busier than ever. So it's, it's been incredible and I, and I love it. That's crazy. So you were mostly self-taught. Like, did you ever have mostly? Lessons, yeah. So I had a buddy at the time who Frank Amato, who, who a buddy of mine in Westfield, who taught me a few chords and got me started. Um, and then YouTube again, just <laughs> lifesaver. It How is. about voice lessons? Like no, all you, all me. Wow. Yep. Yep. I think it was just, I don't know if it's a natural thing. Like, and a lot of people have, a, some people have a hard time playing and then singing together, like the, the rhythm. And then it's like, well, number one, what's the lyrics? Number two, how the hell am I going to sing and play at the same time? For me, it just came naturally. I, I don't know how just to explain it. had a couple it. beers and That's what it is. I, I had a few beers and I think it just all clicked. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. I mean, well, you have like an amazing story and I feel like it's the same for a lot of athletes out there. And like, that's a big reason why Torch Pro has been so great is they're able to like share these stories of all these amazing athletes. They have different journeys, different backgrounds, different passions outside of their sport. They're trying to build their brand. And you're a major part of that now. Why is it like so important to be able to help share those for athletes? Well, I think that like, number one, we always talk about this at Torch. Like we've, we've been in their shoes. So like we understand, it's not like, we weren't athletes and we like we can talk the lingo and when you're an athlete you have a lot of time in your hands and you know obviously the, the sport that you're in is grueling and and it, it takes a lot of you know effort and, and commitment and sacrifice but there's also time in your hands so like what are you going to do at that time a lot of people waste it you know watching netflix or or you know whatever they do, hanging out with friends and talking about nothing, you know what I mean? But there's opportunity there to grow in another avenue. And for me, it was music. For other people, it might be real estate. For other people, it might be finance. And for other people, it might be starting a podcast. You know, you never know. But like for Torch Pro, like we want to make a difference. And I think that, you know, getting in the athletes' lives and helping them find that passion that they might not know they have, um, you know, I think that's where we shine. And I think that if we can make a change there in somebody's life, not only in an individual's life, but maybe a culture's life or a sports life, I think that that's number one for us. And I think that's where we'll succeed. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of, of stories and obviously like playing and, and singing, like that has to like help your storytelling. If somebody was to listen to one of Rob Bellamy's songs, like I had never heard you before, like what song do they have to hear? It's a good question. It is. It's a great question, Cass. Holy hell. This, <laughs> hey, this podcast is rubbing off on you, huh? <laughs> um, it's a tough question. I mean, it's, I have a, I have a lot of different vibes in my songs. Like I like everything. So I love like the party drinking songs that people don't necessarily have to listen intently to. They can just have a good time and like you know, drink to it, party to it, tailgate to it. Um, you know, lyrically, I think there's a couple songs that I have that might um, resonate with people. Like I have a song called Firebird that um, is about, you know, me, I'm a young kid driving around my dad's, uh, I think it's 82 Firebird. And we're in East Providence, Rhode Island. And it's just, I, I talk about my experience being a young kid in the passenger seat, listening to the music that my dad played and, you know, how it affected me. And, and I think a lot of people can resonate with that. Um, there's another song that is called 100 Proof that I think is a really well-written song. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that music is beautiful because it can give you so many different emotions. And I think that over time, it took me a long time, but I'm, I'm getting into a rhythm now where I can maybe touch different ones with different people. And, um, yeah, I don't know. The listeners will have to go check it out and, and see for themselves. Are you on Apple, Spotify? Spotify, yeah, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, Apple Play, Instagram, all that stuff. Any Rob new Bellman. music coming out? I got a few coming on? out, yeah. Just had a son. Uh, he's two months old now, and uh, I wrote a song about him. Uh, it's coming out probably in a, in, a, in a few weeks, so it's called uh, Save Us a Couple Slow Ones, and it's the premise around it is just I know time moves fast, and, you know, I look at you know, my parents, and I can't even imagine what they're thinking right now with me being 37 years old and, you know, 
driving me all over the place and playing hockey games and it goes by like that you know and now and, grandkids and that yeah and now grandkids and now I have a, a, a son of my own and I know that's going to happen with me but the song's about you know saving I know the days will be fast but save save me save my wife and I a couple slow ones so yeah I love it yeah that, that leads us right into our kind of our starting five on the love it let's do it wait you're missing one question Danny had a, had a late ad, and I think it's pretty important. <laughs> the listeners want to know, and we already know the answer, is Casey a better hockey player than you? Yeah, oh, probably, for sure. <laughs> Skill-wise, yeah. Maybe physicality-wise, too. But you're, you're the sandpaper, Maybe Maybe right? grit as well. Yeah, I was, I was a little, you know, I was definitely more of a four-checker and hitter. Um, the puck wasn't on my tape a ton. <laughs> Uh, you didn't it, want it. You're, no. Yeah, I just wanted to get it in the corner and just run somebody over. But um, Casey has that grit too, though. She oh, yeah. But she was probably oh, more skilled that. than I was. She probably saw the ice a little bit better, too. <laughs> I think she did. It's all right, though. Can't teach grit. No, you can't. So I was, I was, I was an unbelievable uh, dump and chase player. <laughs> you need that. Oh, yeah. Every team needs Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Can't right. win on all skill. <laughs> yeah, you can't. All right, you can lead the starting five. All right, so then back to our starting five. Uh, this week we're doing the starting five artists. So your top five artists. Top five. It's can't it's name tough. yourself. No, I would never. <laughs> but I would say Chris Stapleton for sure. I think that he is incredible, not only vocal but songwriter. Eric Church. Um, Tom Petty. I think Tom Petty is one of the best songwriters of all time. Um, there's so many. I don't know. Tom Morgan, Petty's a good one. Morgan Wallen's like, I think his album that he just came out with, the deluxe album, is like one of the best albums ever to come out because the quality of songs and the songwriting and the production, there's 30 songs and every one of them could be on the radio. And he's like Eric Church wrote a few of those songs, and a lot of his songs are written by Hardy and Ernest, or up and coming songwriters. But like, I think it just broke Whitney Houston's record on Billboard for most consecutive weeks at number one on Billboard or something like that. So it's, it's pretty impressive what he's done in, in his career, and it's just kind of starting for him. So I would say him, and um, I'll go a different genre. I'd say, I don't know. I guess folk. I guess Lumineers is another big uh, band that I love. Like when I first started playing guitar, they were a band that I always listened to. So we'll go Lumineers. I like them. They're yeah. unreal in concert. Incredible. They sound just like the record. Yeah. So does Stapleton. Just does like he? the record. I haven't seen him. Yeah. I thought for sure you were going to say Zach Bryan, though. I was. But honorable I didn't, mention? And I, yeah, I'll give him an honorable mention for sure because he's got a hell of a story. You know, I think he was – he was in the Navy, mm-hmm. and was he honorably, honorably discharged? I think he was, yeah, yeah to start. But, like, his – what's cr- – what, like, he's a songwriter that, like, you have to sit down and dissect his lyrics because they're just so good, mm-hmm. you know. And, and he's another kid that's just up and coming. He's, like, crushing the scene right now. Everyone's kind of jumping on his bandwagon. And it's great, too, because he's just authentic. You know, he's I don't know where he's from. I think he's from Washington State maybe, but – just authentic, real, true, great lyrics, and you, you, you like seeing a person like that succeed. Yeah, it's awesome. He hasn't put out a bad song. No. Unbelievable. What's your favorite song? I think, what is it, Revival, right? I like Revival. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. Yeah. He ended his show with it, and the whole crowd, like, he played the chorus, like, five times. He just kept doing it, yeah. and the place was shaking. I it love It was unreal. That's a, that's a, I mean, there's so many good ones. Like, obviously, Something in the Orange is his biggest song right now, but I like Oklahoma City. To yeah. go. There's a video of him like playing it live in the back of a Bronco and they're just like ripping around town and he's playing like with a three piece, like a, I don't know, like a violin player, maybe a bass player. It's pretty cool. I don't know if you've seen it, but you got to check it out. No, I'll have to check that out for yeah. sure. It's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got? Anything else? Yeah. We got one more thing right. we like to do with our guests. It's called the it factor and it's basically whatever makes you, you and why you think you've been able to be successful on your journey, um, just that it factor for yourself that has helped you along the way through your adversities? Yeah, I think, I mean, I've, I've answered this question a couple of times. There's so many different ways to answer it too. I mean, 
I think the biggest thing is just staying consistent and, and you know, building on a day and, like, taking it day by day. But I think, for me, the biggest thing is just showing up. Like, I've just showed up, um, whether it's been for practice, games, or, you know, playing the guitar, learning a new song, writing a song, showing up to a gig, because I think that if you show up, showing up to a podcast, like, it leads to something else. Um, and I think that if you just set your mind to something, set a goal, you know, plan stuff, show up, good things are going to happen. So I like that. I love it. Show yeah, up. Yeah. That could go on a t-shirt, I think. Yeah. <laughs> show up. That's it. Unbelievable. It's a good Slogan, playoff quick shirt. quick and easy. Yeah. Show up. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But now you guys are crushing it so far. It's been, it's been unbelievable. And I'm, I'm, I think that the world needs to see this. I think the hockey world, the, the women's side of things need this because I think you guys have you guys have been handcuffed a little bit in a way that um, the world hasn't got to see like your personalities. Like obviously, Torch has worked with Meg, and I didn't really know Meg before we started working with her. And like we, I remember after the first day, we were like, "We got to do something with this girl because her personality is unreal." And we talked about the podcast. And we're she still was like, working on it. Yeah, and she camera, was like, but. <laughs> she was like, "I have like I think Cass will do it with me. I think it would be incredible." And and so far, it's been unbelievable. And I can't wait for, I can't wait for the hockey world to see it because I think it's going to help grow the sport immensely. And I think it needs it in a bad, bad way. And I think you guys are going to be a huge part in that. So it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for helping us share our stories. Yeah, absolutely. All the storytelling. Thanks for just, putting up with us too. We're just getting Jeez. started. Yeah. Just getting started. <laughs> just show up. That's it. Thank you. Right. Love it. Yep. That's it.